This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on a camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This episode, we talked to Jesse Lyon. His passion is somewhere between hypnotherapy and dream interpretations. Jesse was lucky enough to get his start on his purpose and passions early on in his life. In this episode, you will be given new ways to think about your purpose along with all the dreams that you guys sent in. Those will be interpreted on this episode by him. So please stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy. I posted my first social media piece in 2018, which is like four years ago. Um, that was it. Like I haven't been doing this for very long. And so uh, there's pros and cons to that. I think the pro is that um, I see social media as a tool for, for business, for communication, for education. Um, it's not really a part of my life in a personal way. It's very much like it's, it's business. I'm focused, like I'm on fire. We're doing this. Yep. Uh, but I miss the, um, the social aspect, like the interactions, like what social media was built for. I never really experienced. I never got to have it as like a way to connect with my friends or, or to keep up on life or to just have fun. It's always been work. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird thing for me, pros and cons, you know, pros and cons. For sure. For sure. That, that is, that is really interesting. Um, so how, how did you even get into to your your dream and dream interpretation and like clinical hypnotherapy because I kind of want to break those down in two different sections but okay. uh, start with whatever whatever one you want yeah so uh, timeline wise it started with hypnotherapy that was okay. that was the first thing so you know growing up um, had had some trouble in my teen years with my mental health and so I went to to go see a therapist and um, you know, my kind of evolution was, um, I thought <laughs> when I was in college, I thought that I was going to go to school for philosophy because I loved philosophy. Mm. Like the way to escape the world for me was not through storybooks or video games. It was through thinking. Um, and so I loved philosophy because it was a way for me to escape my reality through thought. Um, but you can't make any money with philosophy. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, all right, well, damn. Um, got to pick something else. I was like, what if I, what if I was a writer, right? You know, philosophy, they write, it's about discourse. Right. So I was like, okay, I'd be an author, like an English major. I was mm -hmm. like, nah, that's not quite it either. So I was like, Oh, psychology, psychology is what uh, kind of connects. It kind of connects uh, this thinking uh, with the exploration. Right. And so I like psychology because um, it, it doesn't have very clear answers a lot of the time. Uh, and that's, that's a safe place for me. Like when things are very experiential and don't have like, this is right. And that is wrong. Um, that's a nice place for me to exist in, in my head and in my emotions. That's super interesting to hear that because I think, I think a lot of the times people love to, to know, should I do this or should I do that? You know, I know. And I frustrate my clients because I do not do that. I was like, yeah. this is your life, not mine. You got to figure this out. I will mm -hmm. give you clarity and insight. Absolutely. But um, I really do believe that it is incredibly narcissistic, uh, full of myself, uh, maybe even selfish to say, I know how to live your life better than you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's very everyone, presumptuous. You're right in that because I think a lot of people, you know, they, 
we, we don't know what other people go through like constantly, you know, on day to day basis. And so, yeah. How, how, who are we to say that we know how to run their life better? I, I run in that same uh, problem because I want to give people advice on like motivation and stuff like that. And it's, it's very interesting. Cause it's like, you can't overdo it. You know, you, you don't want to overdo it because then those people will feel like they're doing something wrong, but like everyone uh, has a different journey with it. Yeah. Well, if you go too far, if you, if you reach for the solution before the person that you're connecting with is ready, you break empathy. Mm. Uh, and so you lose rapport and you lose connection with them because you're running to a point of, of correction before you've really gathered them and connected with them in the moment of despair. Um, and so mm. that can be kind of presumptuous. So uh, that's a safe place for me to live. I like that. I like that there's no right or wrong answers. We're going to just experience it and figure it out together. Um, now, there's definitely some bad answers. <laughs> and we'll yeah. still clear those. Uh, but I love that there is space for nuance, interpretation, and perspective uh, in the things that, that we do. So, so I went to school for psychology. Uh, I got my okay. undergrad. Um, I, started, I started college very early. I was homeschooled kindergarten through 12th grade, uh, and that afforded me the opportunity to start college in 11th grade. So I started college wow. in 11th grade. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's degree um, right at, ooh, I would have been, I would have been just turned 19 and I got my bachelor's degree. Um, and then I went and I knew I was like, hey, the next step is to go to your master's degree. So I went and applied for my master's degree. Uh, I'm sitting there interviewing for my master's and they're like, you're 19. I was like, yeah, I'm 19. Hey, you have a bachelor's. I was like, yes, sir. And I'm ready for my master's. They're like, mm, okay. <laughs> and they told me later after they admitted me, they're like, Jesse, we talked long and hard about you. We almost didn't let you in, but we figured if you were dedicated enough to get the, that schooling done, at your age that you would be dedicated enough to see your master's degree through. And well, thankfully they let me in. And so it was in my master's degree that I learned about hypnotherapy. Wow. Um, for me, growing up the way that I did, um, hypnotherapy was really believed to be kind of like sorcery devil kind of work. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know if it was stated that explicitly, but um, <clears throat> it really was thought like, you don't mess with that. That's opening yourself up to things that you shouldn't be opening yourself up to. Uh, very conservative, very religious. Um, and so my, my thought, logically, being a philosopher, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was like, okay, listen, if there is this thing that can control your mind and take away your will and someone else can control what you do through the power of your mind, shouldn't I at least know how it works to keep myself safe from that happening to me? Like, knowledge is power, right? So yeah. I should probably understand what the hell is going on. So I took a class. I took a certification course in hypnotherapy. I was like, fight fire with fire, baby. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. And so I quickly found out, wow, this is actually really impactful. Like this is groundbreaking. Um, and it's not what I thought it was at all. Um, and so that kind of led me to an understanding of the unconscious mind, which I already really appreciated um, and really felt um, an affinity towards, but hypnotherapy helped me go a little bit deeper into that. Um, one of the pieces of hypnotherapy is um, an understanding that the unconscious mind communicates through metaphor and story and relationship and images, um, which is also the way that dreams communicate. And so there was sort of a natural bridge between my work as a clinical hypnotherapist um, and then dream interpretation. Um, I just started making content online to see what sticks, you know, you throw everything at the wall mm -hmm. and people are like, Oh, dreams. I like that content from Jesse. So I'm like, great. We're taking that. We're running with it, baby. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's how the evolution really started was through hypnosis, through hypnotherapy, and then through conversations with the internet and specifically conversations with my friends. Um, really good friend of mine took me into his office and said, Hey, Jesse, you're you're good at this dream stuff. Like you're pretty intuitive about these things. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, no, 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 trust me. You are. And so he told me his dream and I was like, well, man, I don't know. It sounds like this to me. Um, and he was like, oh shit. Um, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this. And it's all, all started from there. 
that's sweet that that was kind of like your your moment like where you kind of realized that so that was the moment you you've had this feeling since you were like you said you were little like the unconscious mind i mean that that that's uh that's super cool because i don't think a lot of people like for their passions and they don't get to realize that all the time or like even have that necessarily like they just don't know what their passion is or they have to like try to find it you know Um, good point but it's it's really cool that you kind of had that from the beginning like and you and you worked your way into it and what what i like about your story is a i mean your dedication like wow you know you you got your (laughs) bachelor's degree at 19 i mean that's amazing like that's thanks that's really cool and then from that though but it wasn't random like you didn't go to school to like try and at least from my perspective like you didn't go to school to try and like start working immediately and like get rid of like the high school or like other aspects of that like social things like because I knew a lot of uh kids in my high school that would like go from like classes in person to um taking classes at like the college for college credit and stuff like that and they they graduate with um their uh, what is that what is it called with the two-year degree like an aa like associates <laughs> yeah 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 um, yeah yeah they're aa and so um that was interesting but they did that because most of them like didn't want to be in high school anymore like they too grown up but my 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 point bringing this up is is that you didn't it didn't seem like you were doing that it seemed like you were already just going for something that you were passionate about but you wanted to figure out more of right yeah no i was i'm definitely the kind of person who at 16 had a written down in my laptop 10 year plan <laughs> okay wow uh, which is which is a little bit different um but i think it makes sense for me and um i want to encourage others like maybe a part of it is my personality just as a human uh, but i think another part of it is um, i think anybody can do that the thing is if you if you sit down and think about it and you come up with an idea and you're like, this is what I need to be doing. Don't let life dissuade you from that. Mm. Uh, and so for me, you know, I'm sitting down 16 years old. I'm like, okay, I've got to choose something to do with my life. People are asking me questions. What are you going to do? What are you going to go to school for? What do you want to be when you grow up? Right. And I'm like, I, I got to take this serious. I got to sit down and figure this out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's step one. Like, I don't know if a lot of people take it serious. And so taking it serious helps. So I sit down and I think to myself, I'm like, all right, I like philosophy. Let's think this through. Uh, one of my favorite philosophers is um, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, right? I don't. The audio book that I read said Nietzsche. Some people say Nietzsche. I don't know how the hell you say it. <laughs> okay. To me, it's Friedrich Nietzsche, right? So yep. my boy Friedrich, right? He says, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I, I, I loved reading that stuff when I was in high school. But he said, um, man is driven, man, humanity, mm-hmm. man is driven by a will to power. I was like, Friedrich, that makes a lot of damn sense. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, um, man is driven by a will to power. So, so if I'm going to find something that is important enough to me to consume my life and dedicate the rest of my existence to an idea, mm-hmm. it needs to be something that I am just romantically enthralled with this idea of the power that it creates. And so I'm sitting here, I'm like, this makes sense to me. I was like, economists are enthralled by the power of money and finance. Engineers are just mesmerized by the power of uh, like rockets and engineering and building physical things, right? You know, pastors enthralled by the power of spirituality. And I'm like, to me, what, what is it, Jesse, that's just like, that's powerful. I could dedicate myself to that. I was like, behind all of these things, anything that you can name, the most powerful thing that we know of currently as human beings is people. So if I can dedicate my life to the understanding of what it means to be a person and the brain and a human, that would be a life worth living. And so it was from that thought that I kind of held on to it. I'm like, nothing's going to dissuade me from this. If I can dedicate the rest of my life to understanding, amplifying and improving the health and the, the well-being of the psyche of people, that's a life worth living. And that was why, to me, it was so clear because I sat down, I took it seriously, I thought about it, and I said, "This makes sense. No one's going to talk me out of it." What What age were you when you when you really did that? About uh, sixteen, seventeen, like right out, right there. 
Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a weirdo, man. That's, <laughs> but but I love it because the thing is, is this podcast is about that, like the like passions. Like I want other people to l- learn from that. You know, really learn from that because you you got a gift like the fact that you you really figured that out that young i think is fantastic and and um i, I don't even have a word to describe but but <laughs> well, um, thanks man i get uncomfortable with compliments so i'm gonna hide under the desk <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but yeah yeah it's 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 it, it's cool to me because this i love i love seeing that like i know that you care about this i know that you're passionate about it and that's what I want other people to do. I want people to find that in their lives. I want people to find that and 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 really run with it like you did for sure. So would you say that you're on like the right, you're on your right path right now? Yeah, no one can convince me otherwise. This is it, 100%, no doubt in my mind. I like that. I like that. I like that no one uh, can convince you otherwise. I think that's important to have that, that strong will and um, not being affected by other, what other people say, you know, yeah. cause I think, yeah. I think we do that all the time as, um, you know, humans. well, and I think, I think where people really struggle is they connect the meaning and purpose of their life to a thing or to an outcome, which mm. if you notice in the way that I phrased uh, and understood, um, what, what my purpose is, it's not tied to an outcome. My life is dedicated to the understanding and development of being a human, being a person in the psyche. Uh, that could look like a million different things. And so it's okay when the path changes and twists and turns and there's crashes and victories. Um, I didn't know that TikTok and social media was going to be my thing. No yeah. clue. Could not have told you that at 16, 17. It would have been ridiculous to tell you that at 16, 17 because TikTok didn't exist yet. Yeah. Um, what is important though is understanding what the purpose is. And you know, that's something that like... Yeah, the existential therapists and Viktor Frankl being kind of the foremost among them and his idea of imago therapy talked about a lot. Human beings can endure and push through incredible things if they only have a purpose. So I knew that whatever I decided on needed to be uh, a flexible and purposeful statement. Wow. You're right though. Not being tied to an outcome is uh, very important because we get these ideas of our head. That's kind of like the whole materialistic thing, because when you're tied to an outcome, yes. you're, you're chasing that. And, and then you get that and you're like, Oh, but this isn't it. Well, of course it's not it. Cause there's so much more that you could do. And you can't be like you said, like one of the advice that my dad gave me before I moved out of the house and like went on my own, moved to a totally different state. Hmm. He said, he goes, listen, you have this path right now that you want to do this certain thing. And at that time, that was like YouTube. Like I wanted to be a YouTuber so bad. And, uh, and he goes, but don't be afraid to veer off if other opportunities come. And I, at the time I was like, for sure, but I didn't really understand it. But now I totally understand it. And it's exactly what you said. It's like, you, what'd you say? You use that as a, it's not the outcome that you're tied to. It's the it's what the purpose. It's the, the, pur- anchor. the purpose. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it you're not chasing after something. It's you're just you're just living it and things come to you. And look at TikTok. I mean, like you said, that wasn't even around when you were so and and you're doing it now. It that's just that's just amazing. So wow. Um yeah, that would have been 11 years ago that I was having that conversation with myself. Um, or longer. And so that wasn't even really an idea. I mean, think about, think about your favorite YouTubers. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. They were, they were just getting started. Like I listened to, uh, I love, I love YouTubers by the way. Like, like PewDiePie is my uh, role model <laughs> in a lot of ways. He, he's made a lot of mistakes. He's had a lot of, a lot of faults. And so I'm not they glossing all over those. They <laughs> yeah. all have. Uh, but for me, PewDiePie, the idea of PewDiePie represents something for me that is uh, very motivating and gives me uh, a goal or, or a concept to sort of push through. Uh, mm. in, in hypnotherapy, we, or even dream interpretation, we would call that an archetype. To me, to me, PewDiePie is an archetype. And so think about PewDiePie, I mean, he's, he started like 11 years ago. When I was 16, 17, having this thought, that's when PewDiePie was getting going. So this wasn't even like a yeah. thing. <laughs> so I didn't know this. Yeah, that's amazing. So do you... Ch- I'm wondering this then, do you ever come up, not come up, do you ever like have roadblocks 
of that? Like, do you, because you're so confident that, you know, you know what you're doing. Um, like no one can change your mind, but do you run into roadblocks ever? And if so, how do you challenge those? If you do, I think there's a difference between understanding meaning and purpose and then having roadblocks. There's never, for me, I'm so confident about it because there's uh, never a roadblock to my meaning and purpose. My meaning and purpose is my meaning and purpose. And one of the things that's really important and I try and talk to my clients about or to my interns about is that meaning and purpose needs to, absolutely has to begin and end in you. Because Mm -hmm. if it does not, it's weak. So that doesn't mean that it's not helpful. That doesn't mean that it's not beneficial to others. But if you think about my meaning and purpose, to, to strive to improve and to understand the mental health and the psyche of humans, nobody can take that away from me. Even if I go to jail for trumped up charges that aren't real, I can still learn and understand what it means to be a human and to have experience in jail. Mm. I, I, could, I could lose my arms or my legs or have a debilitating illness. And even in that, no one can take away my curiosity about the human experience because even losing my arms is a human experience. Yeah. So no one can take that away. And I think the same thing, like let's say that you're an engineer that goes to jail on false charges. You can still build things and understand and think about things uh, even in adverse situations. So is that an obstacle like going to jail or TikTok uh, (laughs) incorrectly flagging my stuff for community guidelines violations? Absolutely, it's an obstacle to an outcome, but it's never an obstacle to my purpose. Wow. It's very different to me. And and it's it's important to make that differentiation delineation between those two ideals. No, that's super important. I didn't, I never thought about it like that. And that's, that makes sense because yeah, the only time that you'd really have roadblocks or, you know, little interruptions would be to that outcome. Exactly. The Stoics talked about this quite a lot, Um, like Marcus Aurelius and uh, Epictetus talked about this idea that if something can be taken away from you, then it wasn't yours to begin with, Mm. Um, which I I like that a lot. Uh, The problem with the Stoics, though, is they kind of say emotions are stupid and you shouldn't pay attention to them at all. (laughs) I think I think that emotions have a very important and integral role to play in experience and being a human, being a person that they, they kind of miss. Um, I make fun of myself because I'm like, it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, haughty or full of myself to say that I can critique the Stoics (laughs) who (laughs) include like Socrates and all these, these guys. Um, But I, it's my opinion. Take it, take it for what it's worth, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Was there anybody that you were surrounded by? Like, um, you know, I don't know what your life was like back then, but were there important people to you that um, kind of not necessarily pushed you, but nudged you in this direction or a certain direction um, as far as like pr- parents or, you know, guardians, whatever it was like, did they ever fully support you or not support you? Stuff like that. Like, did you ever have any? Yeah, I've got kind of two answers to that question, actually. Um, on the one side, uh, I did. My, my mom pushed me very hard in school. Um, maybe, maybe sometimes a little bit too much. Mm. Um, and my dad was always very, very supportive and pushed me very hard too. Um, and there's, you know, there's pros and cons to that, but there was definitely a push of, uh, moving towards excellence. Um, I also had some, some really good friends, not, I didn't have a lot of friends. I just had a couple, um, like two really important ones and they were always there for me. Uh, and their families were there for me in very difficult times when I struggled with my mental health. And then um, some mentor type people in my life. Like there was one in particular who on, on and off positives and negatives to that relationship, but they did sit me down one day and they're like, okay, Jesse, what's next? I'm like, well, technically it'd be my master's degree. They're like, great. Here's my laptop. Apply for your master's degree and don't come back in the house. Cause I was sitting by their pool. Don't mm-hmm. come back in the house till it's done. It's like, damn. Okay. Yeah. Good point. So, so yes, I did. But on the other hand, sort of the shadow side to that is being homeschooled um, and, and being growing up the way that I did, um, it did feel very alone often. And so those people that I was surrounded with were books 
and research and, and thought and study, I didn't feel very connected uh, with other people and very supported in a lot of ways. And so uh, by reading and by thinking was a way that I was able to be supported and to, and to just validate my experiences as a person uh, in those moments. So yeah, it was, but it was a lot of pushing. It was a lot of perfectionism uh, from, from those people who are around me. But then on the other hand, um, the studying was actually my escape in a lot of ways, mm. where I don't think it is for a lot of people. No, I'd, I'd argue probably not. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I wonder if, I mean, does that still affect you now? Like being pushed that way or no? Like, do Oh, you push- yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I don't know if you could tell, like, <laughs> it still gets a little emotional when I talk about uh, how those feelings um, of loneliness kind of kind of yeah. still creep in at times. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that. I do. Yeah, definitely. Um, man. Yeah, that, that, that would be, uh, that would be hard. Um, you know, yeah, it is, but it's almost part of it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Every, everything's kind of a, a part of that journey, you know, that you're on and it's like, yeah. So you can't really go anywhere. Um, you know, bad. I, I just really like that. Um, that you said, like, there's no roadblocks to it. Cause it's just, you keep doing, you know, you, so I'm just still stuck on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, um, it's a really important idea. Um, and I think, I think I try and communicate that a lot to people that I work with and people that I try and help, um, or mm-hmm. mentor that I, that idea that if you're stuck, if you're frustrated, if you're sad, if you're angry, it doesn't mean that those things are good. It doesn't mean that they're okay or that they're fair, but it does mean that it's your responsibility to understand them. Mm -hmm. It does mean that it presents you with a new opportunity to change and to adapt. We can't, we can't get so wrapped up in our own thoughts and ideals that we miss the reality of existence of, of life. A lot of times people, even, even just with, um, when I'm creating technical things like a website or creating, uh, like my merch store or the way that people submit their dreams to me online, Mm -hmm. there will be flaws and people will (laughs) do things the way that they're not supposed to. It's very easy to point the finger and be like, ah, this person's such an idiot. Like how come they couldn't, uh, put the thing where it's supposed to go. The directions are right here. Yeah it's easy to be frustrated, but as, as much as that's true, they should have read the directions and submitted things the right way or followed the directions, even with my interns or my clients or my following, I have to accept a level of responsibility. I'm expecting this person to do something that maybe is not in line with what they're supposed to do or what they can do. Mm. That responsibility is on me. You can't just sit down and be mad that things didn't turn out the way that you wanted to learn, adapt and change. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think the other thing is what you're hitting on too, is that some people aren't, I don't want to say capable, but like, yeah, some people just aren't meant to do some of those things. Right. And so I think we all have these um, interpretations or, expectations of other people you know we think this is so easy but they don't see it like this you know everyone views this problem or whatever it may be differently and so it's it's really hard to get everyone on that same page nor should everybody really be on that same page anyways because everyone thinks so differently and everybody's aligned differently yeah i agree really strongly strongly with that so let's let's go to dream interpretation then because um, this was interesting. This is how I found you, um, on TikTok. Okay. And, okay. Um, it was that <laughs> if you guys check out Jesse's page, which you definitely should, um, it, <laughs> most of the TikToks that I've seen is how, like, I had a dream about my, my ex-girlfriend and she, <laughs> and, uh, so she's thinking about me. And you're like, nope. <laughs> and so I just, I love that a lot because I think that 
we all have these dreams and I, um, I got some submissions last night that I did on TikTok or, um, on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I just love that. So did you, so like you said, you found that in, uh, in your bachelor's degree, right? Or you found hypnotherapy in your, I found hypnotherapy in my master's degree, In your master's degree. Okay. Yeah. And then dream interpretation came in along where came in later, maybe about really diving into it, maybe about two, three years ago. Pretty really? okay. recently, honestly. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of led you to that besides the unconscious mind? People will often ask me in their sessions about their dreams, just mm. as a mental health counselor, because I, I don't know if a lot of people know, um, I do dream interpretation and hypnotherapy as life coaching, air quotes, okay. uh, uh, across the state, across the globe. I've got people from out of the country even, but it all started because I am a licensed mental health counselor, which is a medical degree, and I hold a license in the state of Florida to do that. So a lot of times my counseling clients will come to me with their dreams and mm. they'll be confused. They won't understand. I work a lot with trauma and PTSD. So one of the major diagnostic symptoms of PTSD or trauma are the nightmares are the night terrors. So I will mm. work with them to talk about those and help create an understanding. Uh, that's where that really kind of comes from. Guys, I interrupt this episode with an announcement. Do you guys deserve to be happy? The answer is yes. Stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. Right now, I have a special offer for you. Get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash L-Y-B-K. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash l-y-b-c-a-d-e thanks again for better help for sponsoring this episode so did that so did that did that start by your clients asking you you know about it and then you were like hmm i should look more into this or yes did that okay yeah it started with people asking me questions hey jesse you know this and mental health and stuff what what's why am i having this weird dream i'm like that's, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me, let me go find out. Like, that's a great question that I do not have an answer for. Yeah. Uh, BRB. <laughs> do you, do you uh, align that pretty well with your, uh, your purpose as well then dream interpretation? I mean, would you say they go hand in hand or like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, dream, dream interpretation and the, the things that happen when we are sleeping are very mm. much related to our emotions and to the human experience. So dreaming is a huge part of what it means to be a person, what it means to understand our emotions in our existence. So that fits in better, understand it, better learn it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, let me ask you this, then we can kind of move there, but uh, some people, I, I came across one of your TikToks and it said that like 90% of you, you forget 90% of your dreams. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. 90% of your dreams within the first 10 minutes after waking up. Wow. Yeah. So dreaming has to do with, you can break this down too, because you're pretty better at this, but dreaming has to do with your, uh, your REM cycle, right? So that was the original concept. The original okay. thought was um, there was actually a very famous, well, I guess not very famous because nobody knows him. There was a very influential uh, sleep scientist who walked into his daughter's bedroom and noticed that while she was sleeping, he could observe the movements of her eyes underneath her eyelids. He thought to himself, well, that's weird. Uh, that's interesting. And so he began to do research on that period of sleep while a person was in bed, mm -hmm. found and, and now labeled what we call REM, rapid eye movement sleep. There's actually five stages of sleep. Four of them are non-rapid eye movement. So very fittingly they called them nrem which is just not rem <laughs> uh real real clever guys so there's rem and then there's uh nrem one two three and four the original concept was that we only dream in rem but with the continued research we've come to find out that we dream actually in all phases mm. of sleep uh, the way that they test that is they will wait and monitor the brain movement uh the brain waves and then wake someone up from each of these four stages and said, hey, can you remember any dreams that you had? They'll ask them immediately. Because remember, 
90% in 10 minutes. So if you ask them immediately, they'll probably be able to remember something. Mm. And they'd be like, oh yeah, I was, I was thinking about this. Oh, so you were dreaming in NREM one, two, three, and four. So uh, yeah, it actually happens all throughout sleep. Um, but <laughs> when our conscious brain turns back on, when we wake up, it kind of says, what's this garbage? And just throws it all out because it sees it as nonsense. Oh, so interesting. Um, it kind of disrupts the, the memory portion because again, the, the prefrontal cortex is the part um, that, is, that is asleep when we're asleep. The prefrontal cortex is also important for tagging and categorizing information saying this is important, commit this to long-term memory in the hippocampus. If your prefrontal cortex is asleep, it can't tag any of that information to say it's important to commit it to hippocampal memory. So that's kind of where that disruption comes. So what you have to do is you have to wake up and then you have to start writing things down. <laughs> okay. And so you're you... kind of manually committing it to memory on paper. So that way your brain can say, oh, I wrote this down. This must be important. Commit this to long-term memory. Cause that's what I was just going to ask. I was going to ask how, so then how come sometimes we can remember? Cause I know that I, I haven't written down. I don't think any, I might've before, but any of my dreams, but there's some dreams that I can remember, you know, just, um, randomly, like I can like wake up and I can remember them after like the whole day. And that's interesting. But then there's also somebody that says that they don't dream often but that's like kind of false, right? Cause everyone dreams, but they just don't remember them. You just forget. Yeah. The mm -hmm. ones that are usually remembered um, and people with a lot of nightmares or trauma will tell you, like, I remember my dreams every night. They're terrible. I hate them. Yeah. Because the dreams that are usually remembered are the ones that have the most intense emotion. Mm. So the real way for the unconscious mind to bypass that memory gap and that 10%, that 10% that gets through the 10 minutes usually is related to very strong emotions that the brain can't ignore. Wow. Yeah. Very so it's insightful. kind of, kind of so intense that it, it breaks through that barrier. That's insane. It really kind of is. It's, it's nuts. That's really crazy. Yeah. All right. So I want to, I want to ask you some, some dreams, um, but, but I do remember you saying, so guys, he's going to, so he's going to, the dreams that I have, he's going to interpret to the best that he can without going too much into it. Right. Cause there's like a, yeah, it, it actually be probably uh, beneficial for me to explain that. Um, okay. Yeah. Go for the it. The reason that I can't explain dreams just freely. Um, somebody has to actually sign a disclaimer and they have to be one of my clients or they have to be with me in coaching or mental health counseling, because since I am a licensed medical professional, Dream interpretation, if I do it specifically and give personal advice based on someone's dream, that would be the same as giving medical advice without someone being a patient. So that makes you sense. Know, if you, if you, if I was a dentist on, on TikTok and you sent me a picture of your mouth, I can't say, oh yeah, you need to do this, this, and this, because yeah. that would be giving medical advice without someone having signed a consent for medical treatment. So what I can do, the, the boundaries are, I can talk about dreams and generally what they mean and talk about symbols and what we find in the research and things like that, but I can't give anyone personal advice about what they should do unless they're a client. Makes sense. So yeah, if that's you why, guys, go ahead. Yeah, that's why, that's why I can't that's, do that. That's why. So yeah, if you guys really want your dream interpret, then I definitely recommend going to Jesse. Uh, Cause he'll come on over. For you. <laughs> um, all right, let's start with this one. This one's really long, but I'm going to like just pick certain things out of it. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So basically the dream was about uh, this person being in a stadium um, kind mm -hmm. of event, all normal people, except there's monsters for monsters, Inc. <laughs> um, monsters for monsters, Inc. I love yeah. it. He's, he's with the girl They're They're walking basically on a sketchy side of the stadium, apparently. And uh -huh. then someone pickpockets him. He runs after him, tackles him gets beat up but he gets his wallet back then they go then they keep going um and then it sounds like <laughs> this sounds like all the dreams that people send me they're weird they're all over the it's, place like it's this. insane I love it. yeah it's just how dreams um, work <laughs> then then he like meets up with his other friend and she tells him to 
the fastest way is to just go through the bad part of the thing. So they do it. And then someone steals her, the girl that he's with. And, and then he has to go save her. And then he like, gets beat up again, but he gets her. And then, uh, this poor guy, man. He's, I know. He's I know. <laughs> he, and then, and then they keep going through the crowd. And then he said a whistle went off and everyone stopped, but they kept going, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and then, uh, let me see here. Then it says, then he said the girl became unconscious when they were like beating everybody up. Um, but then what did it say? He felt like a leech on her back that like apparently they put there as they were walking. He mm -hmm. took it off. She woke up and then she helped him walk. What? That was that was the whole dream. That the other ones won't be as confused as that one, but no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, a lot of people send me these and they're like, "This is so long. This is confusing." It's actually, uh, Kate. It's actually very simple, and this is probably the most surprising part. Oftentimes, what I have I have observed, and I haven't read this anywhere that I can remember, but I have observed in working with dreams for years now. Those dreams that are very long. Uh, will often repeat the same message over and over and over and over again. Mm. And usually what I have observed is that it will repeat it three times. Three seems to be the magic number for the mind. I don't know why <laughs> I'm trying to understand, but I have observed this. So if you think about what happened, it sounds long and confusing. And you're like, how is Jesse going to possibly interpret this? It's actually very <laughs> simple. Stadium, Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Monsters, Inc. Monsters suck energy from children. One symbol. Second symbol, walking through bad part of stadium, someone steals the wallet from this person, beats him up. Again, taking energy, taking force from this person. Mm. Third piece, there's a leech on the back of this girl, sucking life from her. So you see, there's actually the same theme throughout. Three times. Sucking, wow. sucking energy from, sucking energy from, sucking energy from. One is Monsters, Inc. Monsters. One is the pickpocket. And the third one is the leech from the girl. So each of them has to do with this idea and usually is inside a context. Stadium usually has to do a lot with the stage of our life or uh, usually and, and or, so it's both. Uh, connections, friendships, relationships. So stadium is very much about, you know, people coming together with connection, but it's also the stage, the platform of your life. Mm. So there is something... Uh, when I see this kind of repeating theme with individuals of something sucking the life, both, both blood life, which is vitality and strength, financial strength, which is the wallet. Um, and then childhood sort of emotional imagination strength with the monsters, ink monsters, something is going on in this individual's life. When I interpret these dreams, that is taking away the energy and the vitality that they have. And so the dream usually when it's of this genre is telling someone that there's something in their life that they need to let go of. That's really taking away their vitality and strength. And it's going to be really important for them to figure out what that is. It sounds like it has a lot to do with uh, their shadow, which is a very psychoanalytic idea uh, okay. in term. Think about monsters, ink monsters. They live in the shadows. Think about where they were walking through that part of the stadium. It was the bad part of the stadium, the shadow, it was dark. Mm. Um, and so when we talk about the shadow, those usually represent repressed and lost parts of ourselves. Uh, so this, it's a beautiful psychoanalytic Jungian idea that anytime that we present ourselves to the world, we're showing a facade, we're showing a face. Carl Jung would call that the persona, right? So I'm playing a persona right now. I'm okay. a social media influencer. I'm a, a subject matter expert. This is the persona I'm playing. When I leave here, uh, I'm just going to be a regular Joe. I'm going to go eat some lunch. You know, I might go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just normal people stuff. Um, so by presenting this to you here, I am, I am hiding other parts of myself from you. I'm not going to tell you about arguments I have with my family or with my wife. I'm not going to tell you about uh, the private things that I discuss in therapy. Those are mm -hmm. in my shadow. Sometimes when we don't like parts of ourselves, and we're trying to project a certain image, we become so detached and so separated from pieces of who we really are as a person that we forget that those are us. 
and they start to present in our dreams as monsters and things that we run from. Wow. Let's say I've got really uh, strong parents who are very perfectionistic. You got to got to get straight A's. You got to do it right. Excellence is the goal. Well, there's part of me that loves to make mistakes. That's dirty and messy and unstructured, unorganized. The more that I push towards this ideal of perfection, the more that I forget that I'm a flawed human being who makes mistakes. And that's kind of beautiful. I can become then so detached from that part of myself that it appears to me as a monster. Yeah. So most likely in these dreams, when I interpret this genre of dreams for people, that's usually what's happening. It's a part of themselves that's sucking the energy from them because they haven't realized this is a necessary and important part of who you are. You just don't like it. Wow. That's so cool. So let me ask you this really quick based yeah. off of um, just like broad dreams. Cause that we can't go into it obviously too much, but um, do locations matter? Like definitely. Okay. hundred okay. percent. Yeah. So like, if like if it's something you recognize is that like more important than something that's random it's all it's all symbolic so it all okay. matters um but you have to understand the way that the unconscious mind communicates everything is in symbol and in representation allegory metaphor like that yeah so the stadium is important the dark alleyway is important have a dream about being in your childhood home that's important yeah. you're on uh Mars or the moon, you're in the ocean. That's all important. It represents and is symbolic for something. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I hope that uh that person enjoys that response then because I, I know I did. Um yeah, me too. <laughs> let's do thank you for that. Let's do another one. Okay. Um cool. this one's brought. Um, I have a lot of dreams where someone's trying to kill me. <laughs> uh, so this would kind of fall into the same thing, right? There's actually uh, an amazing dream. Uh, I think it's, um, you can actually read about it in A Man and His Symbols, which is a book by Carl Jung. Okay. Uh, wonderful book. Uh, a little bit difficult to read through because Carl Jung talks uh, in a very particular way. <laughs> Interesting. But it's a, it's a fantastic book. And there was an individual that Carl Jung was working with and this individual had a dream. Carl Jung believed a lot in dreams and he's kind of the father, father of modern psychoanalysis. He had this patient who told him about this dream. I have a dream. It's dark. I'm driving a car. And as I'm driving this car, somebody comes up behind me and starts flashing their lights and honking their horn. And they, they almost like are really aggressive. And so I start speeding up, trying to get away from them, trying to drive really fast to like get some distance, keep myself safe. And every time I go really fast, I crash into a pole and the car just crash, boom, done. And then I wake up. So Carl Jung's like, well, did you ask them what they wanted? <laughs> He's like, no, <laughs> ask them what they wanted. He's like, well, ask them what they want. So the next time he has the dream, he kind of set that intention of if I have this dream again, I'm gonna ask them what they want. So in the dream, he's, you know, up oh, there they come, flashing lights, honking horns, stops the car, pulls it over to the road, the car, that's behind him stops, pulls over to the side of the road. He goes in the back of the car in his dream, pulls out a tire iron, like a, like a crowbar or something. And he's like, he's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm a kill him. I'm gonna mess him up. And so he goes over to the window and he like, he's banging on the window. He's like, what do you want? The window rolls down. It's this little old granny. And the granny says, hey, be careful. The lights are out up ahead. You might crash, slow down. <laughs> wow. So the whole dream was a symbol for him running yeah. from parts of himself. He's running from parts of himself. And because he's running from parts of himself, there's a lack of clarity and insight symbolized by it being dark. And that lack of insight and clarity about himself, that repression is going to cause him to have a crash, either financially, relationally, or in his career. He's going to not see the warning signs coming and he's going to crash. But that insight oftentimes for us as people is locked away because we don't accept our full being. There's parts of ourselves that we don't like. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, when you start to repress parts of yourself, there is uh, of necessity, a lack of insight that comes from that repression. So being killed by a monster, it could be you're running from your past, you're running from problems in your relationship, you're running from parts of yourself that you don't want to explore and they feel mm -hmm. like they're out to get you. And honestly, can't blame them. 
if you've been that that much of a jerk to a part of yourself by repressing it, boxing it up, locking it up, saying those evil things that we say to ourselves, you're stupid, you're an idiot inside of our head. Yeah. I really can't blame it for wanting to try and kill you. You're probably kind of an ass to yourself. <laughs> so is there a way to, is there a way to n- narrow that down then? And, you know, for, to figure out which one of those it is or no therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ther- therapy helps therapy helps. And a lot of times if people stop and think about it, I- I'm like, this isn't hard. What's the part of yourself that you hate the most? Oh, like, no, no. oh yeah, that, yeah. That part. I'm like, yeah, that's probably it. Isn't it? They're like, ah, damn yeah <laughs> yeah usually when you stop and think about it you're like oh well duh yeah, yeah you that's can figure it. it out yeah so but working with a counselor in therapy helps tremendously highly I, I agree i agree i think they should um really quick i wanted to ask this too yeah is sure. it because i've seen this is it true that when we well I, you know this goes into like a very broad thing but is it true that when we die in a dream, we wake up right away because we don't know what's like next. Uh, no, no, that's actually a great, great question. Very common misunderstanding. There's two parts to that. Okay. There's the dying in a dream that happens when you kind of jerk yourself awake, like oftentimes falling from a building or being shot, it kind of like jerks you awake. Um, then there's also the dying in a dream that you don't feel as much. Um, that's more symbolic. Both of those have very similar meanings. There's actually, when you fall in a dream and you hit the ground, that's the most common one, you'll jerk awake. What's happening there, it's actually called a hypnic jerk. You can look it up, you can Google that and learn more. Uh, But when we go to sleep, our body can experience um, a blood sugar drop due to hypoglycemia. And so if you eat a lot of sugar before bed, and you may have heard this on my TikTok already. Yep. Um, but if you eat a lot of sugar before bed, or you don't have the proper protein to sustain you through the night, your body will actually feel a falling sensation because you're experiencing a sugar crash while you're asleep. That sugar crash can sometimes be so dramatic that you feel like you're falling and you jerk yourself awake. It's a hypnic jerk Mm. that can also happen due to intense emotions that can also happen due to, uh, sleep apnea, where you kind of stop breathing while you're asleep and you jerk yourself awake because Mm -hmm. you're not getting enough oxygen. But more than that, um, it doesn't have anything to do with, I've heard people saying like, oh, it's part of our monkey brain left over. Like if we feel like we're falling, we wake up because it's our monkey brain thinking we're falling from a tree. <laughs> nothing supports that. I mean, yeah. maybe yeah. I'm sure it's a great idea, but there's no research to support it. Okay. Um, yeah. Usually what it is when we dream of dying, it, when we dream of dying, it's a symbol that we need to be reborn. It's a symbol that we need to let part of ourselves die in order to transform who we are and become Mm -hmm. something new. So if I'm hypercritical of myself, I'm perfectionistic. I've got a job that encourages me to be perfectionistic. My dream will give me symbols of death because that part of me, the perfectionism part needs to die. And I need to be more inclusive and whole and be reborn as something that's more authentic. Wow, dude, I'm like, I'm hopped up. This is so cool. It's wild, man. It's wild. (laughs) This is so cool. All right. All right. right. We'll do another one. Uh, What do some, uh, why do some people not, well, we kind of already did that. Uh, Why do some people not remember their dreams and others do? Forgetting. Setting intention helps a lot. Having a good sleep routine helps a lot. I think I've got, uh, I think I've got a podcast episode that goes through all that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Perfect. Um, Let's go here. Uh, people from my past showing up and then leaving again. Now, I don't know what they mean by leaving again. Could be, I guess, leaving the dream, leaving the dying in that dream. I don't know, but. Yeah, good question. So um, when we see people from our past, you have to remember that kind of the number one cardinal rule of dream interpretation is that all the symbols have to do with you. Mm-hmm. everything is, is about yourself, not because the unconscious mind is necessarily selfish, but because the unconscious mind doesn't really, it's, it's honest. It doesn't really understand other people because to you, I only know Cade through this interaction and through our emails and messages on Instagram. I don't actually know you. I have yeah. an idea of you that's based on my experience of you. So dreams are very honest in saying, Cade for me might symbolize something. Jesse might symbolize something for Cade. And so you might dream of me or I might dream of you as a symbol for an idea that I have associated with you, for example. 
my my grandfather passed away uh, just just kind of recently, and I, his uh, funeral was uh, less than a month ago. So for me, I might dream about my grandpa because he symbolizes wisdom and patience. So in a time where I need to connect with more wisdom and patience, I may dream about my grandfather in order to process what's happening in my waking life. Yeah. If that person kind of leaves again, and there's kind of a sadness about leaving, uh, I would encourage that person to explore that if, you know, and I encourage people to do this all the time for that genre of dreams. Oftentimes when we dream about being cheated on or our partner leaving us or someone leaving us, it can have a lot to do with feeling worthless and low self-confidence because we don't feel like they're worth sticking around. And so it can be a very strong symbol that we don't value ourselves enough and we feel like people are going to leave, uh, leave us because we're not valuable. So that can be kind of the insight that happens in those genre of dreams. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's crazy too. Um, let's, let's keep, I want to, I want to kind of get this. I want to do like, just, we'll just do like two more or something like that. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. I, I, I was lured and captured by a cult of undying cannibals that operated an outdoor mall. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. undying camels that operate an outdoor mall i love that that's amazing is there more to it that was it that's <laughs> that was, it that, that was it that's great uh malls can often be associated with choices feeling overwhelmed by choices cannibals eating yourself that can be um that can be kind of that internal tension that internal conflict where we kind of eat ourselves up you know think about the play on words there yeah uh, I'm, I'm i'm eaten up inside kind of cannibalistic terminology so uh, i wonder what fear of overwhelming choices is eating you up inside with that genre of dreams very wow that's so cool um all right this, <laughs> this one was i was in a classroom and i had to go home and change clothes but my teacher got mad and Ooh. and what was it followed me i think it was followed me back home yeah, like like Loki, these are all just your dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And you're like, you're like, there's no, there's no, nobody sent me their dreams. This is just my dreams over the past three just weeks. Mine. Oh, okay, okay. The the full thing. Was, I'm teasing. Um, I'm teasing. No, 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 no. That was that would be actually really funny. These are all mine. Um, okay, it was. I was in a classroom and I had to go home and change clothes, but my teacher got mad and chased me. Love it. Um, the teacher would be an example of authority figure. Um, it can be an example of like critique and criticism and really the conscious brain. So this is, this is kind of logical thinking, do the right thing, be the right thing, get the right grade. So that's kind of an authority figure, kind of perfectionistic critical. That's a part of yourself and a part of the society that we interact with. Being in school uh, can be either very much related to anxiety, being tested, am I good enough or not good enough? But more often when I find people are thinking about school, they're sort of re-examining the way they fit into the world. So people will dream about high school or middle school because they're kind of having an identity crisis. Mm. In high school and middle school, we kind of decide and, and discover who we are as a person in order to fit into the world. It's where we choose what our career is going to be. So this, you know, when a person goes back to school, they're reevaluating how they fit into the world. Am I doing the right thing with my life? And then changing clothes has a lot to do with persona. Who am I presenting myself as? Clothes um, are the costume that we wear to fit the roles that we play. So to me, school, clothes, and then the critical, to put it all together has a lot to do with, I'm trying to reevaluate my life and the role that I'm playing in my life, but there's a perfectionistic critical part of me that says, no, you can't change. You need to stay just the way that you are. Uh, and so that part is kind of following and chasing that would have to be kind of confronted. So, wow. Those are really, those are really good. Yeah. Really good symbols kind of Dang. in that genre. Yeah. Um, all right. Last one, a zombie apocalypse attacked with family members dying in that situation. Mm. Family members usually s represent support system, trust and like the internal family system. So it's, it's not only our support system and trust and coping with uh, our relationships with others, but also our relationships with ourselves. Like it's kind of the internal family. 
uh, zombie apocalypse are one of my favorites because they really represent like uh, undead problems from the past. So like when we have unresolved conflict in the past, they should be dead. They're in the past, but because they're kind of unresolved, they're like the living dead. They come after you and sometimes they bite you in the ass. <laughs> that's wow that's actually yeah that makes total sense when you say it like that right yeah it's it's pretty wild man gosh dang that's um good stuff. wow we just ate up time i mean jesse i almost want to do another one with you this was awesome this is amazing <laughs> thanks man thanks uh seeing how excited you get about it is uh really encouraging thanks, thanks for sharing man. that passion with me yeah yeah um i i have three end questions um you can answer them as fast or as drawn out as you want. Um, okay. We'll go number one. Uh, what is a daily habit that has changed your life slash perspective? Um, so, oof, good, good question. Uh, the thing that pops into my head immediately, two things. I, I am kind of running out of time and I'm going to have to go here soon. Mm -hmm. So I'll answer it kind of quickly, these last three things. Okay. Um, the thing that pops in my head first is I'm just trying something new out for 2022. Uh, I don't usually do New Year's resolutions and goals, but I'm trying cold showers in the morning. Not the full thing, but like for the last 60 seconds of my yeah. shower, I turn it cold and that's really been giving me a lot of energy. Um, so that's kind of cool. I would think on a, a more impactful level. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that one's kind of, that was just kind of a fun one, but on yeah. a more impactful level, a daily habit is um, never quit. And what I mean by that is if something is important, especially now that we've kind of talked about in the beginning of this episode, the difference between having goals and things as your motivation, as opposed to having purpose as your motivation, uh, never quit on your purpose. Uh, there are some days that you might need to take it easy. You might need to go a little bit lighter. And so even, even for me, I'm not used to the cold. I'm a, from Florida it's pretty hot and swampy down here. And I love that, uh, hundred percent humidity and hundred degrees outside. Fine. No worries for me. So cold showers are weird. And there's some days where I am low energy. I didn't get enough sleep at night. And so I don't turn the shower as cold yeah. as I did the day before, but I don't not do it. Yeah. I always do it. So that's good. Advice. The one thing that is impressive to people, the one thing that will take you far is unrelenting consistency. Always do it. Make a post every day. It might be a shitty post, but make a post every day. Do that thing every day. Eat a vegetable every day. You might have one bite of a carrot, but at least you ate a vegetable that day and you didn't quit on yourself. Yeah. That's a daily habit. That That's amazing. Next one. How would you consider your purpose in life right now? I talked uh, a lot about that. I have, I have two purpose statements. I think of myself, um, I'm, any good company has a purpose statement in order to be successful. So I think people should have purpose statements too. Mm -hmm. I have one for social media and one for my business. And then one for me personally, for my business, it's lion counseling, acceptance through awareness. Mm. I'm helping people learn how to accept themselves through an awareness of themselves. For my social media brand, it is uh, your mind's not against you. It's just misunderstood. That's the tagline for my social media brand. And then for me personally, my life mission, my purpose statement is literally this. I've memorized it since I was 16 <laughs> to help people break past their emotional bonds and live the lives they're supposed to live. My entire life is dedicated to that one sentence. If I, I can that. do that for the rest of my life, my life will be worth living. I love that. I love that yeah. a lot. What's something you know that you wish others understood or know or knew? Man, I would say I, I kind of already spoiled it, but I would say your mind's not against you. It's just misunderstood. Uh, two things uh, that I think I can elaborate on with that statement. One being your emotions, your thoughts, and your feelings are not the problem. It is your interpretation of your emotions, thoughts, and feelings that is the problem. You just don't know why you're feeling, thinking, and behaving this way. If you can understand, through understanding, through knowledge, comes power and adaptability and, and liberation, honestly. I mean, knowledge is liberating. Understanding is liberating. And then second, to elaborate on that, 
the, the main point being your mind's not against you, it's just misunderstood. The second point is uh, it is very presumptuous and unhelpful for a therapist and a person to try and take away a symptom from somebody. If you're anxious, if you're depressed, if you have flashbacks, if there's something going on, it is mean. It's mean. I'll say mean. It is mean for someone to try and take that symptom away from you. And what I mean by that, because that might be surprising, what I mean by that is that symptom serves a purpose and it is unacceptable to try and take away that symptom until you understand why it's there and replace it with something more beneficial. If you're anxious, behind that anxiety is most likely fear. You need to build and have a system to cope with your fear, to keep you safe. Wow. That's a need. You need to be safe. Your anxiety is trying to keep you safe by worrying about everything. Don't take away your anxiety until you've put in place a system to keep you safe. If you're depressed, your life, usually depression comes from a life that has no meaning. Don't try and take someone's depression away until instead you've put meaning back into their life to fill that hole. People uh, are incapable of having empty space. You need to fill the symptom with something before you relieve the symptom from the person. And that's really what I mean. I mean, there's so much depth to that one statement of your mind's not against you. It's just misunderstood. And if I could just leave people with those two things, symptoms are important. They need to be understood. And your emotions are important. They need to be understood. And it all wraps in together. Jesse, you're blowing my mind. That was very, <laughs> very well said. And I like it, it, it brings out so much um, truth to like, wow. I mean, see, I'm just blown away. That was really, really, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for asking and listening, man. Um, yeah. Having, having someone who genuinely cares and genuinely listens is, uh, not as common as people would think. Yeah. And, and I value it. So thank you, Cade. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Uh, but thank you so much for joining. Sounds good. Sounds good. Find me online. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Uh, take a second here. Promote, promote everything you want to promote. Yeah. So, so the big push for me, uh, we just started live dream classes. Uh, so we do live dream classes every week on Mondays. Uh, everything can be found at lionmentalhealth.com, L Y O N mentalhealth.com. But even if you spell it the wrong way, I bought both domain names. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but nice. it's L Y O N mental health, uh, lion mental health. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube and TikToks, my big platform with 1.2 yeah. million followers. Um, but uh, yeah, join join our dream class. Send me your dream. Help support the channel. Buy the merch. Yes, get some <laughs> it merch. Helps, it helps it's make nice. the dream possible because uh, social media doesn't pay me much of anything. It pays me nothing. Yeah. So helping make this content available and accessible to people. I appreciate everyone who watches and follows and supports the channel. It means the world that I can continue to kind of live out this mission. Yes, please go Thanks. support and go check them out. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Cade. Yep. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you.